Oklahoma City Thunder are your new NBA champions. What a moment it is right now to see the team who played so well together enjoying this NBA championship moment. How's it going fellas and welcome to the channel where I kick back, relax and talk NBA 2K. But today I'm not going to be talking, I'm going to be teaching you guys. I've taught you how to get an A plus in my career. But now I'm going to teach you how to win more games. Hope you win the championship in your very first season. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking about picking a team, how to be a guard, and how to be a big man, and some small tips to help you win the championship in your very first season. If you do like that sort of stuff, don't forget to leave a like. And I am on the road to a 1,000 subscribers, so a subscription would really help out. But anyway, guys, I've talked and raved long enough. So the first thing I want to talk about is picking a team. You can always pick a safe team like the Lakers, the Bucks, the Clippers, teams like that. Teams that you know that are going to have guaranteed wins. But if you don't want to be those teams, big men are worth their weight in gold. Pick a team with a good big men because big men help a lot. Even if they're 100% contested under the ring, they can still make shots better than what shooters can wide open in my career. It's ridiculous. The shooting in my career for the AI is so unpredictable. You can have Clay Thompson wide open in the corner and he'll brick, brick, brick all the time. But you have ja JaVale McGee under the ring, 100% contested, jumping, three guys jumping at him and he still gets it in. So big men are worth their weight in gold this year. They really are, guys. You've got to use a team. If you're not using a great team like the Lakers, the Bucks, those sorts of teams, you need a team with good big men. So the next thing I want to talk about is don't overlook the superstar. Look, if you're a point guard, don't go to the Golden State Warriors. If you're a small forward, don't go to the Lakers or the Bucks because you're, you're overlooking the superstar. In 2K, they don't change their positions and just put Giannis to power forward or LeBron to point guard or anything like that. It doesn't work like that. You'll take their minutes and then they won't be getting as many minutes on the court and it's just a catastrophe. Always pick a club that you don't overtake the superstar in their team because you want more than one superstar. You want you and him working together instead of fighting for minutes. So now let's talk in-game. In-game tips for you guys, especially for guards that can shoot. Pick and roll at the hash is your best friend. You All you do is pick and roll at the hash or in the corner, and a lot of the times the players will step back. The AI will just step back for no reason and leave you wide open. If you're a half-decent shooter, let it fly. Really, guys, you'll learn your jump shot a lot better in my career just using pick and rolls because they walk away from the hash and leave you wide open or walk away from the corner and leave you wide open and then all of a sudden if they don't walk back just move a little bit towards the screen so they hit the hit the screen if they go under the screen where they go towards the basket it leaves you wide open for an open shot as long as you're not holding r2 and running you'll be able to pop up a shot easy wide open nearly 90 percent of the time you just got to make sure that they hit the screen right and go away from you instead of when they hit the screen going towards you. If they go towards you, don't shoot. Just keep running and try and beat him with your speed. Drive to the basket. Either you'll have an easy layup to the basket or chuck it to your guy on the roll or on the fade. It's as simple as that, guys. It's just simple decision making in the pick and roll. The pick and roll works a treat in my career. Learn how to use it. Pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll. If you don't know how to use it, just hold L1 when the ball's in your hand and the, your big man will come over. If you do want to select a screen for a certain player, tap L1 and then hold the button for the player that comes up. That's all you got to do, fellas. It's that easy. Just set pick and roll after pick and roll. If you're struggling to win games, the pick and roll will help you a lot. Just practice, practice, practice the pick and roll. The next thing I want to talk about is the fast break. There's so many fast break opportunities in NBA 2K20 is my career. Use the fake drive to the basket. So you're, guys, just grab the rebound. You're on the fast break. Run when you're at half court, run over half court in the middle of the court, then run over it, then hit the corner. Because once your player, the AI player, hits the paint, he pretty much stays in there. You've just got to put him in the paint, and then he'll stay there. If he doesn't stay there, he'll be holding L2 and really, really slow. So run to the middle, over halfway. Once your player is around the paint, and you see him in that crab animation, that intensive D, when players hold L2, 
hit the corner straight away, you'll be wide open every time. There's another trick when doing that too, is when your player gets over halfway, say you're on the left-hand side, cut across to the right-hand side because the players, once they're in the middle of the field, the AI, they'll go into that, as I said, that crab animation, that intensive defense where their lateral quickness will be their quickness instead of their actual speed, and you'll just run straight round them. So at half court, if you're on the left hand side, cut to the right and vice versa. If you're on the right, cut to the left. It's that simple, guys. You can simply just run round players on the fast break or outplay them by just simply running down the court, faking the drive and hitting the corner. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to guards is space creator with step backs. Step backs help a lot because they make angle breakers if you have space creator high enough, but it also freezes players if you have tight handles on and it triggers a lot in my career. All you've got to do is hold R2 and hit the right analog stick down and that will create a step back which will create tons of space against the AI. It freezes them pretty much 80% of the time and then you'll get a little stumble if you don't have playmaking takeover which breaks their ankles a little bit and you have tons of time to throw up shots or create space for other players on the team. So the next thing I want to talk about is in-game tips for slashes and centers. Off-ball screens help a lot. It's just like on-ball screens where the guard. Slashes and centers excel with off-ball screens. All you got to do is when you're on the court, I like to use it at the hash. Stand just a bit left or right of the hat, bit towards the middle of the court and the hash. And I tap L1 and then follow the instructions. You'll see the little circle pop up, run to that circle and then you'll see your player run to where they're setting the screen, run around them, and it's an easy drive to the basket a lot of the time. You've just got to decide whether you pass the ball normally or chuck an alley-oop, because sometimes when you chuck an alley-oop, the guy does come across and steal it. But other than that, if you just throw normal passes and only throw the alley when it's needed, it's easy buckets, off-ball screens. Just tap L1 and follow the instructions, fellas. Pretty much anywhere on the court. You can create space with off-ball screens. Alley-oop every chance you get because it helps you rep a ton. Just make sure both players are open, the passer and the receiver, because if your receiver doesn't have Lob City finisher, you're going to struggle to make dunks if you can test it. It really is, and especially if they have Intimidator, it's very hard to make dunks. You just miss random dunks, and especially if your passer doesn't have Lob City passer, if he's covered as well and defended, there's no point throwing lobs because it's a bad pass and then you might not make the alley-oop. But if your passer and receiver are wide open, just throw it up, fellas, because it's tons of extra VC. Not VC, what is it? Rep and badges. That's what you need to do. Alley-oops every chance you get. Just make sure that the both players are open, fellas. Use the stick to dunk. There's no reason why you should be using square anymore. With the stick to dunk, all you do is hold down for a flashy dunk up for a relatively easy dunk, left for left hand, right for right hand. It makes it so much easier. It really does, fellas. It makes you choose, oh, I'm a bit more open on the right hand side, I'm going to do a right handed dunk. You actually have way more control over your dunks using the sticks and you have way more control over your hop steps. Hop steps are way overpowered this year. But they're kind of hard to do with square. But if you change the stick, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. All you do is just tap it right. Just don't hold it. Just tap it while you're running, and it's easy as. Tap the button, then hold it when you want to dunk. It's that simple. The last thing I want to talk about is just a few tips to help you guys get better at my career and hopefully makes you win more games because it helped me win more games. Team chemistry is important if you're playing on high difficulties. You want those guys happy and making shots as much as possible because that will help a ton. You want them scoring as many points as you can. So team chemistry needs to be at 100 pretty much all the time on higher difficulties. Another thing I want to talk about is don't be a ball hog and score all the points because if you don't get everybody involved and keep their averages somewhat decent, you won't be helped out in the sim mode when you sim and be subbed out of the game. Because I think, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think the sim mode works on averages. So if LeBron averages 20 points, He's going to score 20 points in the sim, 25 points. But if he averages 10 points because you're scoring all the points and not dotting the ball, he's only going to score 10 points in the sim. It's all about numbers, fellas. So you need to keep those averages up if you want the sim to work and to 
for you to actually keep winning in the sim, you need these other players involved in the game when you're on the court. Playing 12 minute quarters helps a lot for badges and progression because when you're lower, it's really hard to get badges on 5 minute quarters because the game's over before you know it. You know, you have a couple of turnovers and a couple of bad plays, and you only get a few when you're on little minutes. So when you play on 12 minute quarters, you can actually build a bit of badges and build a bit of time and build a bit of progression that you can actually use because 12 minute quarters you actually have a chance to get into the game have a, if you have a couple of bad plays you can still recover from it on low minute quarters if you have a couple of bad plays it's all over it really is and the last thing i want to talk about if you can be bothered do the training fellas after each and every game i know it's monotonous but if you are struggling to get badges every little bit helps it really does fellas and then you'll get Sometimes you'll go into the training and there'll be an NBA superstar or an NBA legend there and you get times four, so that helps a lot. And then you get coaches drills as well, which is times two. So just doing those every game, I know it's monotonous, but it really does help out getting your badges because you're unlocking pretty much 2,800 before every game for one of your badges. Just say you do shooting four times, you get 2,800 badge points so it really does help out think of 10 games that's 28,000 that's pretty much a badge or two two badges just by doing the training the training helps a ton this year you've got to start doing the training and every little thing even the Gatorade performance things go into the Gatorade Center get your higher attributes make you the best player that you can be the quicker that you do that and you go through the monotonous stuff you'll upgrade your player and you'll be killing it in no time but anyway guys I've talked and raved long enough if you do like these rant and raves leave a like hit the subscribe button I am on the road to a thousand subscribers it really would help out but anyway guys I've talked and raved long enough leave a like Comment, subscribe, and I'll catch us later.